Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it was Patch Tuesday. I think I actually got it uh, wrong earlier this week where I mentioned uh, Patch Tuesday would be next week. But luckily, Renato has his act together and published his usual concise overview of all the patches released by Microsoft. 49 vulnerabilities patched, 6 critical and 2 are already being exploited. One of the exploited vulnerabilities that I thought was kind of interesting was a secure boot security feature bypass vulnerability. We had vulnerabilities like this uh, before. Not percent sure which exact uh, variety here has already been exploited or whether it was already published. CVE 2023-24932, of course, in order to exploit this vulnerability you need to have physical access to the system but that's exactly what secure boot is supposed to protect the second already exploited vulnerability is one of those win 32k elevation of privilege vulnerabilities plenty of them in the past so no real big surprise here cve 2023 29 33 6 cvs score of 7.8 which it's kind of what you usually get for a privilege escalation vulnerability. Among the critical vulnerabilities, the most interesting one is probably the Windows Network File System vulnerability. Again, a system that we have had a number of critical vulnerabilities against in the past. Some exploits were released against those past vulnerabilities. CVSS score of 9.8 unauthenticated uh, remote code execution over the network. As a workaround, Microsoft recommends disabling NFS version 4. Version 2 and 3 are not affected by this vulnerability. However, Microsoft points out there was an earlier vulnerability just a year ago in May 2022. So that one you still need to patch, even if you do apply the workaround. You also need to restart the NFS server after you apply the necessary configuration change. I don't believe NFS is enabled by default in Windows, but it may easily be enabled if you need it, for example, often to interact with Unix systems. But that's not the only remote code execution vulnerability that can be exploited over the network. The second vulnerability is affecting the LDAP server, CVE 2023-28283. And this again allows an unauthenticated attacker to exploit the LDAP server by sending some crafted LDAP calls. Both of these vulnerabilities, NFS as well as LDAP, should be blocked by any halfway sanely configured firewall. Remaining critical vulnerabilities affect the secure socket tunneling protocol, also something that uh, was patched in prior months as well. The pragmatic general multicast uh, protocol. This one I think is a bit interesting. Don't we know enough about the protocol? But again, a 9.8 CVSS score here and does lead to remote code execution. A Windows OLE remote code execution vulnerability. Well, uh, had plenty of OLE vulnerabilities, so not really all that excited by this one. And the final critical vulnerability affects the SharePoint server. So certainly double check your perimeter firewall configuration, make sure none of this LDAP and NFS traffic can either enter or leave your network and we'll just get patching. And as usual, Renato is considering the Chromium vulnerabilities that we already talked about that were patched a couple days ago as part of the 59 vulnerabilities patched at Patch Tuesday. And GitHub today announced a push protection. Push protection has been in beta for a while, but now it's an official feature. It's available to free accounts, so you don't have to pay for it. And the big deal about it is that it will automatically prevent the pushing of changes that contain secrets. It 
does sort of know the format of a number of different API keys and the like. And if any of your changes contains one of those secrets, then the push will be rejected. If you have signed up for GitHub's advanced security, then you'll also be able to customize the patterns that are being detected. So you could include like some internal API key format or such that's not part of the public set that GitHub looks for. I can see a couple of false positives here when you have like sample keys and the like. Not that I'm so sure yet how this exactly will be dealt with. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. As usual, if I forgot something, uh, please let me know. If I made a mistake, uh, please let me know. That's how I know that someone is actually listening. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.